Hey, this is Dr. Tom Rogers coming to you today um, with the Dictations Weekly. And we're going to talk about something today that um, is very dear to my heart um, because I've been watching my own blood pressure over the years. Um, it tends to get a little bit higher as you age. At 65 this past year, I've noticed my pressure is kind of climbing, not to a you know, an alarming rate, stroke level or anything like that, but um, there was some in my parents, and um, but I think it's because as you get older, your, art, your arteries kind of harden just a little bit. Um, that's why I went from having a perfect calcium score 10 years ago to a little bit of calcium plaque in my coronaries this year when I rechecked it 10 years later. So, again, as you get older, you're trying to kind of fight that um, aging process and do everything you can to prevent hardening of the arteries because cardiovascular disease is the number one killer in America. And so when you think about this, think about blood pressure. That's what we'll talk about today because it's so, it's so common to have elevated blood pressure. And we used to say anything under 140 over 90 was fine, but now we know it's probably more like you want it 119 on the top or under and below 79 on the bottom number, systolic, diastolic. And both numbers are really equally important. So if one of them's up, you need to be concerned. Um, and really, you ought to have your own blood pressure cuff. One time when you go in the doctor's office may not be representative. To me, if you come in there and your pressure sky high, it's going to be sky high at other times. Now, I like to have people sit and relax in my waiting room for a little bit, at least five minutes to see and then re, and then check it. And if it's elevated, recheck it. But, um, but uh, I think most of the blood pressure cuffs these days work pretty well, whether it's on your wrist, your uh, upper arm, or you do it with a stethoscope. Um, you should probably get an automated cuff just to be more consistent and check it several times a day. There's no excuse for anybody not having their own blood pressure cuff at home these days because it's really, really important. So today I'm going to go over some myths about blood pressure. Uh, the first myth is that it's no big deal. In fact, it's a real big deal. Um, it's one of the major causes of stroke and heart attacks and also kidney disease. Um, so it is a big deal. People think it's no big deal because they can't feel it. It's really been called the silent killer for a reason. You really don't feel your blood pressure going up unless it's really high. So that's why you need to monitor it. So the truth is when your blood flow exerts too much pressure on your vessels, it's causing damage to your heart, um, your brain, your kidneys, um, and really all of your major organs. So that increased pressure on the vessel wall, which is what blood pressure is, is causing damage. It's a silent killer, and you can do something about it. Um, second myth, there's no good treatment. Um, there's great treatments, and we'll go over them in a minute, but uh, you have to have a plan for this. And it's not only medications. Uh, again, if I can do anything natural, I'd prefer that over using medications. And we'll go over a few of the medications and even herbal natural remedies in a minute. But So there is, a, there is good treatment for that. It's not inevitable that you're going to suffer from high blood pressure. Uh, third myth, a little high blood pressure is okay. And that's really like kind of being a little pregnant or pre-diabetic. I mean, you know, it is what it is. A little is harmful just like a lot is. So take it seriously. Um, you want optimal for yourself, not normal. Um, myth number four, Hyper hypertension cannot be prevented. Um that's really totally wrong. It can be prevented. You're not destined to your genetic susceptibilities. And again, your parents and brothers or grandparents, you know, they probably had lifestyles that weren't optimal either. So um, simple lifestyle changes like eating a healthy diet, um, cutting out refined salt, um, losing weight, 
getting good sleep. Make sure you don't have sleep apnea. Sleep apnea is one of the major causes of hypertension and heart disease and sudden death. Um, exercise helps. Learning to relax helps. Drinking more water. All these things that really promote a healthy lifestyle will reduce your blood pressure. Um, the last myth, treatment is difficult. Well, you know, not really. Um, there's a lot of blood pressure medicines out there. A lot of them do cause side effects. So I always start out with the most natural things you can do, including what I just talked about, about uh, losing weight, um, exercising, relaxing, sleeping, drinking water, all those things. But there's some other things, too. turns out that potassium is really good. There's a couple minerals here that are great for your blood pressure. One of them is potassium. Um, you know, potassium kind of works the opposite of sodium. Um, as potassium moves into the cell, sodium moves out. So really potassium... Um, relaxes your blood vessels. That's one reason it, it kind of helps it. And then also, when you talk about sodium, sodium and causing high blood pressure, um, I'm not big on too much salt. I like sea salt. That won't raise your blood pressure. And it actually has so many good nutrients in it. You should, I actually add it to my water every morning. But refined salt's really not good. And a lot of salty foods are not good for you. Um, like luncheon meat, sausage, bacon, pretzels, popcorns, chips, peanuts. So try to avoid those. Um, but sodium prevents your kidneys from eliminating water efficiently. And that's kind of how it uh, relaxes your blood pressure. Um, so um, think about think about taking some potassium. I take a supplement that combines potassium with this next mineral I'm going to talk about, magnesium. We've talked many times about the many benefits of magnesium, the different types of magnesiums. And um, magnesium also has a great effect on lowering your blood pressure as, re as well as relaxing you. So I do a life extension vitamin, magnesium with potassium. So it has both, and it really has helped my blood pressure tremendously because I noticed it started creeping up in the last year or so. So I do take that. So other treatments increase your water, Practice breathing. Uh, we've talked a lot about breathing techniques through your nose, um, how it releases nitric oxide. And so learn how to breathe, you know, deep breathing, um, diaphragmatic breathing, belly breathing. It also relaxes you and will immediately bring down your blood pressure and ward off an anxiety attack. Um, herbs that help, uh, there's a lot of them. I like turmeric, garlic cinnamon that helps your sugars as well uh, flaxseed ginger hawthorns a great one um, so you know that's how on my list I definitely take a garlic peel every day it's probably the number one herb for preventing cancer and it also helps your blood pressure so think about that cutting out certain foods another thing I did this year was purchase an infrared sauna an infrared sauna can really relax your blood vessel vessels draw heat to the surface of your body um, it detoxifies you it gets rid of harmful chemicals that you may get through your food uh, helps you sweat so i think an infrared sauna is really good for your blood pressure as well as a bunch of other stuff uh, plus it relaxes you um, things that will increase your blood pressure of course alcohol caffeine birth control pills non steroidal anti-inflammatories, um, antidepressants can, can also raise your blood pressure. And again, I talked about sleep apnea. Now, prescription medications for high blood pressure, um, there's a vast variety of these things, and they're really promoted through pharmaceutical companies. Uh, I can't tell you how many people are on blood pressure medicines. So do the natural stuff first if you can. And then if you have to be on a blood pressure medicine, I'm fine with that too, as long as it doesn't cause you too many side effects. The angiotensin receptor blockade, like Losartan, Telmosartan, Ibisartan, um, those are like Micardis and Cozar, uh, common brand names. Those are my favorite because they just don't seem to cause the the uh, side effects that the other ones do. So I'm not against you taking a low-dose um, 
medication like one of these ARBs. So do that first. The ACE inhibitors, uh, long-standing first-line treatment of blood pressure, uh, they're okay. They do protect your kidneys, but in about 20 to 30 percent of the cases, they cause a chronic dry cough. So if you're on lisinopril and you've got a dry cough, think about uh, getting on an ARB. There's beta blockers that are thought to be cardioprotective. They also help arrhythmias, but they can make you tired, cause some sexual dysfunctions, and um, they're not what they're cracked up to be. Um, calcium channel blockers um, are pretty potent for relaxing uh, your arteries. But they can cause a lot of side effects too, like swelling, fluid retention, uh, constipation, fatigue. So, and then you have some alpha blockers. They're really potent, but they can really dry you out and cause a lot of other problems. So there's a lot of different uh, blood pressure medicines. Diuretics uh, can be added. I tend to use diuretics more in women than men. Don't like diuretics in men a whole lot. They deplete your testosterone levels. And women tend to retain fluid worse than men do. Sometimes they're helpful, though, uh, especially for women. But they do tend to reduce uh, your potassium, and sometimes they can dehydrate you. Uh, so they're not my first choice. They used to be the first-line medicine. Now they're definitely not. So there's a lot of different um, things you can do for your blood pressure. You hear my dog barking because uh, we're outside on a beautiful fall day. Um, so think about your blood pressure. Get a blood pressure cuff, test it yourself, and um, come in, bring, bring us your measurements. We also do blood work to see what kind of kidney function you may have. We check your electrolytes, uh, other things like adrenals and thyroid can affect your blood pressure. So think about high blood pressure, hypertension, the silent killer. Pay attention because it is very important. Thanks. This is Dr. Tom Rogers at Performance Medicine. We'll see you next week.